okay, I'm doing laundry on this day and this day, and this is when it gets folded, and this is the exact time, and this is when it goes in, because if I don't, it just like doesn't get done. If you're cooking food, if you're cleaning your house, if you're decorating it, you're a homemaker. You know, everyone said like parenting doesn't come with a guide, homemaking doesn't come with a guide, but if there was gonna be a guide, this would be it. So today I thought I would talk about a few books that really changed my life as a homemaker. I consider a homemaker to be, you know, not just necessarily a stay-at-home mom or, you know, like someone that can write homemaker in there, you know, when it asks you your occupation. I really consider a homemaker to be anyone who has a home at all, which is basically everyone. Not everyone is the homemaker of the family. I don't really consider my husband to be a homemaker. If you're making a home, if you're cooking food, if you're cleaning your house, if you're decorating it, you're a homemaker. I picked three because at first I was thinking, oh, okay, it should be five books, four or five books. And then I was trying to come up with the list and I didn't want to add any book that you know, I wasn't really passionate about or that actually did change my life. So I decided to just stick with the three that have most impacted me. All right, so this first one, and this is actually, some may consider it to be three books. It's a volume and it includes three books. And this is called the Summa Domestica. It's kind of a play on the Summa Theologica for of Thomas Aquinas. And I've heard some people say like, oh, that's really lofty or that's really ambitious to name your book after that just because like, you know, Thomas Aquinas is iconic, obviously, and a saint and it's a little ambitious to say this is the Summa Domestica. Maybe it's a little bit tongue in cheek, but it actually really does live up to its name. You know, everyone said like parenting doesn't come with a guide, homemaking doesn't come with a guide, but if there was gonna be a guide, this would be it. And this was actually based, so the author is Lay Lila, yeah, I think she says it Lila, Lila Lawler. And she has a blog that she's had for, I don't know, 15, 20 years. It's extremely popular. It's called Like Mother, Like Daughter. And I've known about that blog for maybe five, six years. I don't think she writes on it as much as she did at one point. But basically this book is all of the compiled blog posts, or at least her favorite ones. Okay, so the first book is called Home Culture. And this one is the most philosophical. Okay, so she has a few parts in here, order and wonder. That's kind of like a saying that comes up a lot in here. On the woman in the home, that's about choosing to be home and not working. She's pretty adamant about women like not working outside the home. I think you can make it work. I hold a job outside the home and at the moment it does work. Also, sometimes I think that, you know, these women who spend these time writing these blogs and books, like that is a job in itself or, you know, there can be paying job, paying jobs that take less time than that, really. So it's kind of a matter of balance. Motherhood in the Field, she talks about such topics as waking up in the morning. She has a famous blog post that she turned into a chapter. It's called How to Take a Shower, which is like pretty funny. Um, nursing a newborn, just all of those little things that you wish your mom had told you. I know like my mom didn't, never nursed a baby. We were all formula fed. So she didn't really have advice for me for that. So when I had a baby, I had no idea what I was doing because it's like a whole different ball game. I wish I would have had this before any of that. It would have been very, very helpful. But basically it's filled with just really, really practical, practical tips for running a house, mothering. Her father was like a systems engineer 
And she talks about this a lot, that she kind of inherited his mind and his love of systems. I'm kind of that way too. Like if I don't have a system for something, it's going to fall apart. And I would like another thing, like my mom, she's like type A superwoman, but she didn't have necessarily a system and still doesn't. I don't know how she does it. She didn't have a system for like doing the laundry, which is kind of like the laundry got done, you know, whenever it needed to be. And I like have come to realize that I cannot function that way. I really have to have like, okay, I'm doing laundry on this day and this day, and this is when it gets folded, and this is the exact time, and this is when it goes in, because if I don't, it just like doesn't get done. Okay, so volume two is called Education, and this is basically about how she homeschools. She never was the type to use someone else's curriculum. Um, she always made her own. I feel like that's kind of my style too. It's kind of, we have a similar philosophy, just, you know, reading great books. What I love about these books, not just this volume, but this entire set, is that she is really giving advice that not only is it good, but it's not the same advice you read everywhere else, which is like something that's kind of a pet peeves of mine. It's like, you know, there's endless videos. It's like 10 things I do as a homemaker and it's always like the same thing or it's something, you know, the creator just kind of Googled and copy and pasted. And this is not that. This is really like 40 years of her like personal experience. Her children are all grown. It's like invaluable. It's like sitting down to have coffee with a friend that you wish you had, but you don't. <laughs> I really love this. She gives like specific book suggestions. She gives ideas for how to make a schedule, how to plan your whole year. And I believe she homeschooled like six or seven kids all the way through. It is really, really great advice in here. The last volume, it's called Housekeeping. What I really liked about this too is she basically says she's was not a natural housekeeper. This was something that she had to learn. I feel really similar. I am not like a naturally organized or clean person. Um, like when I was a teenager and when I was in my 20s, I was like disgustingly messy and like didn't understand not only like how to clean, but just how to like pick up. It's, it's interesting, like, as I've gotten old, like, the, the older I get, the more I value, like, a tidy house. Like, every night before I go to bed, I have to pick up, you know, all the toys. Like, everything has to be picked up. Or when I wake up in the morning, I, like, can't function, <laughs> basically. And she also applies, like, a lot of sort of, like, engineering systems to you know, having, having a cleaning system. Another, another part of this that I really liked is she gives amazing advice for planning meals. One of the examples, um, or one of the pieces of advice that she gives for meal planning that has worked really, really well for me is, okay, so what do you make for dinner every night? That's the hardest thing, right? Because you can make anything in the world. Um, so the advice that she gives is basically you want to make like a master meal list of meals. So you ask your husband, like, what were some of the meals that your family ate growing up that you loved? And you try to think of stuff from your own childhood. You can ask people you know. And the key with this meal list is it's not just, just like one entree. You want to have like a set meal, a set plan for the entrees and the sides because they usually go together, right? Uh, that has been like a game changer for me. I used to only think of an entree and then it was like, okay, but what are we gonna have for a side? I don't know if she writes this in here, but another thing that I've really applied with that is when I'm making, when I'm planning a meal, I always kind of think of it in terms of like region or ethnicity. So let's say I'm making, um, here's a good example. I bought these German sausages um, at the grocery store the other day. 
and it was one of those days where I was just like, I don't know what to make for dinner. And I was looking in the freezer and I saw those sausages and I was like, okay, let's have these for dinner. And then I was talking to my husband. I was like, well, what should we have for a side? And then I was thinking, okay, well, they're German sausages. So we should have like some sort of other German dish. We could have like sauerkraut. We could have make spätzle from scratch. We could make um, pretzels from scratch. So we ended up like, and this was, ended up being really fun. We ended up looking up how to make homemade pretzels and that went really well with our sausages. This is probably my favorite volume. And I, I can't emphasize enough like how much I loved this whole box set. Um, it was kind of expensive. I think it was like 40 bucks for the whole thing, but they're really nice hard covers. They're well designed. I think I, when I got this in the mail, I think the whole thing, like each of these volumes is 400 pages and I read all of them in like two weeks. And I'm usually not that much of a voracious reader, like I'm usually kind of slow and it can take me like months to get through a book. Um, but like this, I just devoured it. Like every spare second I had, I would sit down and read it and I read like 1200 pages in two weeks. So. That is my number one recommendation. If you are going to buy one book to teach you how to be a better homemaker, or even if you don't, not if you're not in the market for new books, just go to her blog. It's called Like Mother, Like Daughter, and read her posts. I think she has like a bookmark of some of her most popular posts. It is the best. I can't think of anything else that really compares. Number two book. Unfortunately, I do not have a hard copy of it. I downloaded this as an ebook. I really should buy a hard copy of it just because I love this book so much. I reference it all the time. It really changed my whole outlook on cooking and my whole philosophy behind it. It is it is called, I'll pull it up on my phone. I don't know how well you can see that. Oops. An Everlasting Meal, Cooking with Economy and Grace by Tamara Adler. Um, so you're probably thinking, okay, like, I don't need another cookbook. This is not your average cookbook. It's called An Everlasting Meal. So basically the idea behind the book is using up different leftovers or turning, like, scraps from one meal into another meal. I think she was inspired to write this book by... MFK Fisher, How to Cook a Wolf, which I actually haven't read. I probably should because her whole introduction is basically how, um, you know, she based this book around that. Okay, so how to begin, how to boil water, how to teach an egg to fly. There's a whole chapter about cooking eggs. How to stride ahead. That was a game changer because it's basically about how to, you know, what we would call meal prep for the week. Although her, you know, her version of meal prepping is not like you're making all the meals for one week. You are prepping all the vegetables for the week. And then you basically have all of the ingredients ready to go. So if you're really busy during the week, you can just kind of throw everything together on, on the day of, but it's still fresh cooking. So it's not traditional, you know, meal prepping, like you're making a bunch of freezer meals. It's on a whole different level. It, this is, it, I can't emphasize enough, this is not a traditional cookbook. It's written absolutely beautiful. She references all sorts of like amazing writers and it's philosophical and it will change your approach to cooking. I used to be really sort of strict or like un unadventurous, not so much unadventurous. I think I was afraid. I used to be, <laughs> like a strict recipe follower because I didn't trust myself to improvise. I couldn't like veer off the recipe because I didn't know how the ingredients would basically interact with each other. I don't know if this is something that just comes with time or if it's something that can be taught initially, but I'm totally not that way anymore. I think it has to do with experience. She, even the recipes in this book, it's just kind of like a pinch of this and a hint of that. It's not going to be like a quarter of a cup or 
I mean, maybe she does have that, but you're probably not going to measure. If you're an experienced cook, you're probably not going to measure out a quarter of a cup of anything. But it's very unique ideas for using everything. If you're on a budget, or if you're trying to save money, or if you are not and you just like being economical, this is the book for you. I cannot recommend it enough. Last book, this one is called The Hidden Art of Homemaking. It's by Edith Schaefer. You may know her husband, Francis Schaefer. This one is really interesting because it's not a how-to manual. It was really not what I expected at all. It's more about basically bringing more art and beauty into your homemaking. So like one of the suggestions she has, this one really stuck out to me for some reason. If you like to draw and paint and you're a homemaker, you can basically make like a beautiful menu. Like that's, that's one of her ideas. Um, she has just, just kind of ideas for making your home like a memorable place for your children. Yeah, it's not a how-to guide. There's not anything about systems. It's almost the opposite of that other book, but it's really good if you're feeling, if you're an experienced homemaker and you want to bring some novelty in or some beautiful ideas in that can just, you know, make like the everyday experience of your home a little bit more beautiful. So that's all I've got for you today. Thank you. And I hope you can maybe buy some of these and your life will be changed for the better, just like mine was.